welcome to Indie Meme and welcome to uh, Austin. So tell us uh, about the weather is so good in the morning. I can't tell you like, oh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Have you gone for a run in the morning? Yes, yes. There's a and there's a beautiful park next to it. It's beautiful, and I think there's a very nice uh, workout culture is there. Yeah, yeah. It's first time in Austin. First time. In Austin. First time in US? No. Uh, I've done my screenplay writing course in New York, so yeah. Oh, it's way better. Austin's way better than New York. It's way better. Ah, yeah. Though that place is a cubicle place. Okay, I'll tell you the story. Uh, when we were kids, we used to go to uh, for summer holidays. We used to go to our uh, hometown in Uttarakhand. That time we have beautiful houses, and you know those those trees are there. There are fruits uh, next to your uh, garden and everything. And every year when we are going, we, we are realizing those houses are now becoming depleted, right? And we, uh, and I was at that time, I don't have any, didn't have any idea of this migration thing because we were kids, right? And also we came from a, a working class background. We don't understand those things. Okay, every that time was oh he went to Delhi, oh wow, all of that. So. Once I have uh, grown up and went to my this place, and I have realized the story of how we are just keep migrating and keep running and not finding a space. And now uh, in COVID times, everybody wants to go back to your hometown or home place. So this idea came from there. And to be very honest, my my uh, my father came from Uttarakhand to Delhi to work to become a driver. Even me, my whole life, I am not with my parents, not with my family, living alone. But what I'm doing is from Delhi migrated to Bombay to work. So we just keep running. Like so this calls in Mami we have uh, four screenings. All four screenings were completely house pack and uh, we got a great, great response. Uh, they, they are related to uh, migration, they are related to this father-son story, the relationship. Uh, and no doubt, there's uh, in India we talk about we don't talk about it also, but uh, sexual harassment uh, to portray in a way. I think they, they actually the best part is because I didn't play that thing on the nose. I just played the thing and let's make a slice of life film so that I don't want to preach them. I just want to show it to them and then rest up to them. Line in my film that says you're running out of age. That's me, by the way. I'm, I'm feeling that every time I make a film because I wanted to make film when I was 20 and I didn't do it yet. So I feel really bad. I feel I'm very, very old. I'm, I'm 32. This is my first short film. Uh, uh, there are other short films that I wrote, but I thought uh, this is something that's very personal to me. There are a number of themes within the film that, that I, I, I felt. Uh, part of the inspiration is definitely from the frustration that I was having with my own life, not able to make certain bold choices at different stages of my life. Uh, so I thought, okay, this is, this is something really personal to me and I wanted this to be my first shot. Tell us about the theme. Uh, it's about it's about uh, uh, it's a character focused drama, uh, particularly zooming on in on a crucial day when this uh, person decides to quit her act, uh, quit her day job to pursue acting career, and then she 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 gets caught in a situation, and that's what the story is about. The themes predominantly are about this existential anxiety, uh, alienation, indecision, uh, psychological uh, surrender to uh, life's absurdities in general. That's intense. How how did you come up with this? Uh, so I was uh, I was actually like I was saying the frustration was always there. Uh, that was like me. I didn't have the the spine that can hold it in a narrative structure. Like you know when you when you have a story, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that you have story to be told through narrative structure, as in like short film or the feature film. Uh, so I, I didn't have that. I was reading uh, different books, and uh, this book particularly. Uh, uh, inspired me. That's um, Kafka's Metamorphosis. So I was reading this, and I was I, I immediately knew the beginning, middle, and the end. Uh, so it's 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 basically it's about this character uh, who wakes up as a bug or a cockroach in the beginning of the film. He doesn't explain why, by the way. So it's it's just going through and being in the shoes of this character. He he turn he just turned into a bug, but he, all he worries about is what his boss boss would say, what his uh, parents would say. Did you have a tough time casting for this? Yeah, it, it is really tough time, and I'm I'm really glad that I could uh, finally find Sirisha, somebody who could hold 13 and a half minutes uh, straight, 
single character, single setting. It's really hard, and I'm I'm getting uh, uh, really good uh, appreciation for her. Uh, so what I I wanted the, this is a Telugu language film. That's the place from uh, where I come from, and there are not really uh, uh, I won't say maybe I didn't find really good Telugu actors yet. So I was I was actually very concerned and particular about the dialect that we speak. So I was uh, that and also there's a different kind of English that I speak. And there are different kind of uh, uh, there's a different dialect that in, uh, that South Asians speak. Uh, so I wanted to be particular there. So it's it's really hard. But finally, I got my lead. Yeah. Neha, welcome to Foundation TV. Welcome to Indie Meme, and welcome to Austin. How are you feeling? Good. Well, I live here, so it's really nice. So I just came from across the street, but it is nice to be here in this capacity as a filmmaker instead of like an attendee. Oh, tell tell us about your film. Yeah, so it's a short film called So That Happened. It's a slice of life romantic comedy between two South Asian characters, and we filmed it in Austin. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of about people who knew each other, reconnecting, and just kind of seeing like where they stand in their lives. Yeah. What, how did you come up with this idea? Was that something from a personal experience, inspiration from somebody else's life? Um, it was kind of a mix of uh, like experiences in college and friends' experiences, and just like also just frustrations with with dating and like you know like time passing. And um, it was also like I love films like the Before Trilogy from Richard Linklater. Um, Normal People is one of my favorite shows and books. Um, Past Lives, which recently came out. Is a film I really love. So I love these films about relationships changing over time and just like a kind of misconnection, but also just like the weaving of, of um, people coming in and out of your life. Is this your first film? It is, yes. That's exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. <laughs> is this the first time you're going to like, is it playing for the first time in a film festival? Yes, so we premiered on Wednesday, and so I was a lot more nervous then, but it's kind of nice. I'm like, okay, like, that's done. <laughs> like, we have some time. And then uh, we're playing at three additional festivals, um, uh, Cinema Columbus in Ohio next week. Uh, we're playing at VC in L.A., which is uh, formerly the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. That'll be our West Coast premiere. We have another festival that's unannounced, and then we're waiting to hear back from a lot more. So we hope to bring it, like, all over the country. Are you planning already for your next film? Kind of. I have like an idea and like some sentences and random things, but nothing like really concrete to put together. But I would definitely love to make another film. And uh, what's your message for upcoming or dreaming, aspiring filmmakers? Um, well, you know, I, I said this earlier, but you know, like I'm 33. I think a lot of people think that you have to like make something amazing when you're in your 20s or when you're in school. But I'm like, unless you're dead, there's like, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And so like, there's no timeline on like wanting to try something new or like educating yourself. And, you know, like, until I got a grant um, that partially helped make this film, like, I was like, I didn't know if I would make one. I wanted to, but I didn't know if I did. Right. And I think it's just like asking friends who have made films before. So like, I was very much a learning experience for me too. But I think it's like, if you have... If you have like the drive to want to do it, um, then you should try. Also, it's such a collaborative process, right? Like, you know, you don't have to do it by yourself. So it's a short called Places I've Called My Own that plays tomorrow at 10.30. Um, it's a film, uh, kind of a portrait of a queer woman who goes back from here to India um, in the, at the height of COVID um, for her father's funeral. And the film deals with sort of her relationship with her estranged family and an ex-lover who's now married and with to a man. And uh, dealing with kind of the idea of can a queer person have family and home at the same time? Because uh, especially in India and so many other countries, uh, in order to be able to have make a life for yourself and and have a family, you have to move away from home, uh, which is also a privilege because many people cannot move away from home. Uh, but when you do, you know, to make a life, you move away, but you leave the life behind that you've grown up with. And that sort of is very irreconcilable, you know. Uh, how do you, you're always wondering, can I stay here and make a life or should I go away? That's kind of what the film is about. This is a sensitive subject, of course, and uh, 
you've you've made other films as well, right? So was this one particularly difficult to cast or get people to sort of come together to produce something like that? Uh, no, I actually worked with the same lead actress from my previous film, and we have a great working relationship. Um, Aditi Vasudev, she's a fantastic actress, and. Um, we had to prepare for it in a different way, of course, uh, to explore the character and, and what it means. Um, but I, I think largely my films revolve around the subject of home identity and all under the umbrella of patriarchy, which is kind of overwhelming, at least where I come from. So, uh, so that's, you know, thematically, again, a repetition in terms of what I'm making. Do you have any advice for uh, new filmmakers? Um, no, keep making good films. <laughs> yeah. Is it easier to make films that you can yourself can relate to? Um, I don't know how you could make a film that you cannot relate to. This film is written by uh, Nita Sham, who's my sister. So the film is um, quite a lot of first-hand experiences of what we saw as immigrants moving to UK. So we moved, I was around 10 when we moved. And, um, you know, like as naturally you'd expect, the posher side of London, and we were quite excited. But when we came, we uh, lived in a very immigrant-centric part of uh, London, on a South Hall. And that was the polar opposite of what we had expected from London. And then we saw that there's a huge immigrant community and people were living in shared accommodations. And this one community who were the undocumented migrants, they were almost living an invisible life. And then we got very curious of what would happen if somebody from that community went missing. So while we always had this idea of making a film someday, and hopefully we can continue making films where we share stories, we really wanted to start with something that we knew quite well and that we'd seen over the years. So that's where it all started. And fortunately, we met our producer, Mohan Nader, and then Adil Hussain, who's also here, came on board, Nimisha Sajjan, Lena, Antonio, and our wonderful cast and crew who really made the film special, but yeah. So one thing is that, you know, like, as we speak every day, the rules are changing, the laws are changing. So we have to be quite on top of it to make sure that whatever we're showing in the film, so whatever we've shown now is very true to 2021 time, because that's when we shot the film. Uh, but more or less it's the same, though there's been some government changes and things like that. But the struggles that the undocumented migrants go through, we've been able to capture that. And um, uh, we went through, we spoke to a lot of focus groups, a lot of charities, uh, a lot of of uh, undocumented migrants themselves for their stories and it's a combination of many true stories kind of um, sort of like you know closely knit together. Is there a character in the film that you had a particularly hard time finding uh, the right person for? I'll probably say uh, Rohan's character who uh, is played by Antonio Akil because um, is an Afghani character and uh, we were just constantly thinking of who best would portray it and because um, for example with Adil Hussain um, you know it it kind of happened quite naturally that he happened to be in the UK and him being the lead protagonist we pitched to him and then it happened sort of that way but um, Antonio's character uh, Rahan's character who's also one of the lead is probably the last character that we filled and um, and uh, it was very intricate in the sense that you know somebody has to and because I'm also not an Afghani uh, person myself um, I wanted to I wanted to cast somebody who has done similar roles before and he had already done it. And then he was also such a sweetheart, he went above and beyond in getting a language coach and researching on his own and then, you know, we collaboratively worked together and bringing it together. But yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good question. I'm, I have become pretty much accustomed to this feeling of like little apprehension, but at the same time, I have uh, immense trust, uh, uh, trust, I trust the audiences because I think um, it has been made, the film had been made with a lot of, lot of hard work. I mean, all filmmakers make films with a lot of hard work, but then the research and the kind of truth, uh, which I think is the greatest strength of this film, so I think people will feel that when it stands, when the film and narrative stands on truth, uh, experienced by the writer herself and also the director herself. 
and seen those happening around the writer director then it it sort of acquires a different kind of strength and i'm i'm sure it will touch the touch the audience yeah so i'm feeling okay about it but it's still very apprehensive probably the ambiguity of the of this particular film is more uh, uh more important because i think each members uh member would go away with very unique things depending upon their association with the past generations if the if the expats are watching it if somebody who is not an expat then i think it will open their eyes to a reality that probably not everybody is very familiar with generally what happens is that a rosy picture is uh, drawn in uh, other indian cinemas that oh you go abroad and you dance around in the glossy and glitter uh, you know films which are generally produced in bombay so this is very harsh reality so one becomes more aware of what is happening and probably they would contribute to or they would be more empathetic towards people those who have come from different parts of the world and trying to make a living uh, yeah <laughs> my back ache <laughs> yeah so 15 days in the shoot i was uh, doing a shot and my director natalia says oh adil that was so good the back ache i'm like that's real now oh <laughs> because i had been walking like that so i actually got a back ache <laughs> so that was very unique <laughs>